Hello everyone, I hope you're doing okay. Today we're talking about the Consumer Operative, the single target roly-poly burst damage glass cannon for all you sneaky lads out there. So, let's talk about it. Brief disclaimer, as usual, I'm not an expert on this spec. I'm just a nerd. I play a lot of small tour. But if there's anything that I miss or anything you recommend, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. I'm sure your fellow players would appreciate it. Stats, quickly, PVE, 110% accuracy every single time. PVP, you can kind of drop your accuracy, you don't really need it. For your alacrity, 7.2% alacrity, that should compensate for most of your lag issues, and then throw everything else into crit, we're gonna have those big fat critties that we really like to see all the time on this spec. It's pretty important to us, so make sure to dump everything else into crit. For our tactical, Ashen Lash is going to be our single target sustained damage tactical. This is going to be increasing the damage of our Acid Blade and making it so that every time we use Laceration, Acid Blade will get refreshed over and over and over again. However, there are some other options here. For single target burst, like in PvP, Volatile Strike is pretty darn nice. It does a whole bunch of damage by letting you detonate your Volatile Substance by using Veiled Strike and then making your backstab crit. So if you want that once every 12 seconds massive burst combo, you can totally take Volatile Strike. It's very, very nice. Finally, you can take Explosive Cells, which is gonna make your Volatile Substance essentially an AoE. It's a lot of damage, especially in AoE situations. But for the purposes of this video, we'll be focusing on Acid Lash. It's just kind of the best. For our legendaries, these are kind of boring. Uh, tacticians is going to give us 10% crit chance every time you get a tactical advantage, which is going to be pretty much all the time. So a flat extra 10% crit chance, we love to see it. Finally, Lights and Loaded Package is going to increase our range and tech damage by 5%. These are pretty boring tacticals, but frankly, they're just kind of the best. So they are what we run with. Additionally, I take the Focus Retribution Zero Difference Assault Relics. I know some people have asked that in the past, so that's what personally I like to use. Looking over at our ability tree, there are a lot of options to here, so I'm going to let you know the primary ones that I take for PvE and the ones that I take for PvP. Roll Knife is just amazing. It's going to increase or decrease our stim boost cooldown by 10 seconds every time you use a last rate. It's going to be a lot of stim boost, so we take that pretty much every time. PvE, I take quick countermeasures. In PvP, I take debilitate. Moving the line here, Crippling Wounds are going to give you Fat crits, especially on our volatile substances. It's what I take pretty much every single time. You can make the case for the best defense, but frankly, I just like the big old damage you get from crippling wounds. PVE, tactical critical, is just great sustained damage all the time. PVP, tactical overdrive, is great for resetting some of these cooldowns and setting up some pretty major burst windows, especially if you're in like ranked. It's just a great little ability here. Moving the line here, chemical resistant inlays is gonna be 5% DR. Nothing else is really here. Moving the line, Endorphin Rush is great for PvE, especially if you're just starting off in this spec. This spec can be very punishing for energy management. So, for example, if you're looking up a guide on YouTube for how to play Consume and Operative, this will probably be the one for you. Some people will take Evasive Screen in PvP to help you get out of combat faster. It's kind of up to you. Hollis Reverse is pretty darn fantastic. It grants you a tactical advantage, and it makes you have a little bit of a leap, gives you a little extra movement speed, so it's pretty darn nice. In PvP, you can take Flashbang for the extra stun. It's kind of up to you. Finally, Blow for Blow is just a lot of fun all the time. There are some times, though, where you can use Evasive Imperative, and it'll be oh, very useful for getting those extra evasions off. It's kind of up to you. Personally, I think Blow for Blow is just more fun, so it's hard to compete with fun. Before we dive into this spec here, we need to talk about our two uh, management systems that we have to take care of here in concealment. The first is going to be our straight up energy management. Below your health bar here is this little yellow bar. This little bit yellow bar is your energy. In order to do damage in this spec, we need to spend that energy on our abilities. However, this spec is actually very dangerous because this spec wants to drain all the energy in the world from you. So if you were to do something dumb, like say use your high damaging abilities over and over and over and over and over again, and you reach the bottom here, you're gonna notice that your energy regenerates slower the lower it is. So what that means is that the game will punish you for playing it poorly and then make you sit here and eat your medicine. It's, it's a pretty bad time. So the goal of this spec is to be above like 70 energy as often as possible. If those of you who don't know, you can come into your interface here by clicking interface editor, clicking on your player frame and then show information text. That will show you exactly what percentage you're at when it comes to your energy. If you drop below 70%, be careful. All right, especially if you're just getting into it. If you're just getting into it, you should probably be careful if you're at like 75. So just take it slow, 
take it slow. But don't worry, I'll give you some little tips and tricks to help you manage your energy. So that is your first resource you have to manage here. The second resource we have to manage is going to be this little blue guy here called a tactical advantage. Tactical advantage stacks up to two times. It's a little chest mouth you're gonna see. Tactical advantages are essentially extra resources that we have to be juggling here. They are used on our high damaging abilities. Some abilities generate tactical advantages. Some abilities use tactical advantages. If you see an ability and you're like, why can't I click this? It's probably because you don't have the tactical advantages to manage it. So. The second job, as you can see on Operative, is to be juggling our tactical advantages to make sure that we have enough of them when we're going through our little priority system here. So energy and tactical advantages are your two primary concerns when it comes to doing damage. Let's talk about actually doing damage though. This has been a long-winded intro. I wanna actually hit things. Well, too bad, because the first ability we're talking about is gonna be our Stim Boost. Stim Boost does exactly zero damage, but what it does is gives you 10% alacrity which is gonna help with our energy management. Ah, very nice. Stim Boost is going to give that 10% alacrity, so it's not really gonna like increase the speed of play too much, but it's gonna help you regenerate energy faster. Additionally, in concealment, it gives us 20% extra critical damage, which is a lot of damage. It's gonna make our regular crits turn into essentially super crits. And this lasts for 15 seconds. And now if you remember, because of our little thing we took here called Roll Knife, Every time you use our last rate, we're going to be reducing the cooldown of stim boost by 10 seconds. Now for an ability that has a, about a two minute cooldown, that means if you use like 12 last rates, you'll get your stim boost back every single time, which is uh, pretty darn nice. So we want to be smashing stim boost as often as possible to get that little extra crit damage, a little extra alacrity, help us manage our energy a little bit better. It's just a great ability. We want to be smashing it basically whenever it's off a of cooldown. All right, that's enough about that. Let's talk about our four primary damaging abilities here. The first is our backstab. Backstab has two use cases. The first is if you are in stealth. If you are in stealth and you use a backstab on the target, you will get a tactical advantage, which is that little blue guy we mentioned before. It's pretty darn nice. Additionally, you're gonna do like 30K damage to the target. So if you see here, you have to be standing behind the target because it's you know, it's a, it's a backstab, so you have to actually position behind the target, get behind the target, smash that backstab button, and then you do a whole bunch of damage. Additionally, you're gonna see that this little poison acid blade has been applied to the target. That is a little dot that's applied after using our backstab. It's pretty darn nice. If you remember, because of the tactical we're taking, if every time we use our last rate, that damage is going to be refreshing. So it's a combo of a couple of different things. When you use it from stealth, you get a tactical advantage, you get a whole bunch of extra damage, and just generally, we use a we get a poison effect as well. It's pretty darn nice. If you are out of stealth, you can still use a backstab. There are some benefits that we'll talk about it later. It just does less damage. So just know, if you're using backstab from stealth, it does more damage, all right? It's pretty darn nice. That is our first high damaging ability, backstab. It is kind of the most important ability in our little priority system here. So every time you have backstab available, Hit it, it's pretty darn nice. The second most important ability in our priority system is going to be our Volatile Substance. Volatile Substance does, in theory, a boatload of damage. You can see here, we apply it to the target, and it's supposed to do a whole bunch of damage. But it's not, but it's not. Because in order for Volatile Substance to detonate, a dot must be applied to the target. But didn't we just talk about a dot? Ah, oh, we did, our Acid Blade. So what this means is that every time we are using our backstab and applying our dot, we can then use our volatile substance and then our acid blade dot will detonate our volatile substance. So it's a little way for these two abilities to be feeding into each other. The acid or the backstab applies the dot, the volatile substance is detonated on the dot. Now, if for some, you know, godforsaken reason, you don't have backstab on the target, there are a couple of other ways you could be detonating this volatile substance. For example, our corrosive dart is a ranged dot ability. Uh, corrosive dart is probably the most dangerous ability in the game, but if you need to, you can use it to apply a dot to the target and detonate that volatile substance. For example, if you move out of the way or out of the range of the target, you can use volatile substance that way. Additionally, you can use your toxic haze to detonate your volatile substance. Um, but that's more if you're in like an AOE situation. For the most part, all you need to know is if there's a dot on the target, volatile substance will be detonating pretty much every time. It's a nice little ability, 
all right? Does a whole bunch of damage, and additionally, it grants a little debuff here called, let's see if it detonates, 4 for 4, called Revealing Weakness. What this means is that you can now use your backstab on the target from any position, and it's going to count as if you attacked from stealth, which means you're going to get extra damage on your backstab, and you're going to get a tactical advantage, which is just very nice. So if you're wondering why you can use your backstab while staring the target in the face sometimes, it's because you've applied the debuff of uh, vulnerable to backstab essentially from your volatile substance, which means you can now use backstab, for example, in the face. You can backstab in the face, you know, enjoy that meme. So, interactions so far. Backstab applies dot. Dots detonate volatile substance. Volatile substance gives you buffs to your backstab. It's pretty darn nice. But these abilities have a rather long cooldown, which is uh, kind of sad. Kind of sad. There's a lot of downtime here. So how do we fill that downtime? Well, that's where the next two important abilities come in called Veiled Strike. One second. Dude needs to come in. Sorry about that. All right. Let's quickly talk about our final two abilities here called Veiled Strike and Laceration. Veiled Strike is a very straightforward ability. It does like 20k damage. It's not that impressive, but it gives us a tactical advantage. It's pretty darn nice. So uh, it has a little five second cooldown here. It gives you a tactical advantage. It also gives the target this little susceptible de or debuff here, which is going to make it take increased damage from our tech attacks. So uh, it's a nice little ability and it's gonna give us a whole bunch of tactical advantages, which is just so nice. So nice of it, very generous of it to give us all those tactical advantages. But what are we spending those tactical advantages on? Well, laceration. Laceration, 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 and finally more lacerations, especially in single target. We want to be spending pretty much every single tactical advantage we get into our lacerations. We can be spamming it over and over and over again. It's very nice. Every time you use a laceration, remember, we're going to get 10 seconds off the next stem boost, which is uh, pretty darn fantastic. Additionally, additionally, every time that you use laceration on the target, it is going to increase the duration of our acid blade. Additionally, every single time that we use laceration on the target, and it has been like 10 seconds or so, it's going to actually refund a tactical advantage if there is a dot applied to the target. So what that means is that our acid blade and our laceration play into each other pretty darn heavily. Let me say that one more time. Dot damage on the target and losing lacerate will refund one tactical advantage like once every 10 seconds or so. I'm not sure if that's the exact number and I don't care to go fishing for it. So by having backstabbed the target first and making sure that we have all of our ducks in a row and using lacerate on the target over and over and over again, we're gonna make sure that we're keeping that poison acid blade up very, very frequently and we're gonna be generating more tactical advantage that we can use on more lacerates. Uh, it's a pretty nice little cyclical cycle of acid blade on the target, more laceration damage, more laceration damage, more acid blade damage. Acid Blade has about a six second duration, so we want to be using a laceration once every uh, four cooldowns or so. You're going to be using a laceration a lot more than that, but just know that the window is kind of ticking pretty quickly on that Acid Blade damage, so once every six seconds you should be using a laceration to keep the Acid Blade on the target. If it falls off, that's okay because the cooldown of backstab is only like 12 seconds or so. It's just kind of unfortunate because you're gonna get less critical damage on our last, or less damage on our last raid straight up, and you're not gonna get those extra tactical advantages. So just be mindful of trying to keep that acid blade on the target at all times. So, recapping. Backstab, big damage, applies poisoned to the target makes sure that we have this poison on the target at all times because the poison detonates our volatile substance. That volatile substance gives you a revealing weakness which is going to make your backstab, give you a tactical advantage, and it's going to make your backstab do more damage. It's pretty darn nice. Additionally, we're going to be jugg juggling our tactical advantages by using our build strike and then spamming lacerate as often as possible. That's kind of the very basics of it. But there are some extra interactions here that you probably want to know about. For example, we took this little thing here that said, boop, 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 crippling wounds. Crippling strikes cause the next direct damaging ability to automatically critically hit. That's because we have this lovely ability here called crippling slice. Crippling slice doesn't do a whole lot of damage, I'll be honest with you. It does like 12K damage, but it makes your next direct attack critically hit, which is pretty darn nice. Additionally, it consumes no energy. 
which for a spec that is pretty much demanding energy 24 seven, uh, that's pretty darn nice. It makes sure that we don't have to be as energy starved all the time. We can just use our crippling slice to, you know, give that little bit of breathing room. But how do we want to be using our crippling slice? Well, I'm glad you asked me. We want to be using crippling slice two abilities after we use our, vol our volatile substance. This will make sure that the next direct attack that we use, or I'm sorry, let me back that up. When we have volatile substance, it doesn't detonate right away. It ticks for about two global cooldowns and then it detonates. So what we can do is we can take that to our advantage and essentially make sure that our crippling slice is going to be applied on our volatile substance every time by using our volatile substance and then an ability and then our crippling slice. So volatile substance, any ability, crippling slice. So what that's gonna look like is for example, if I went volatile substance into my backstab, into my crippling slice, the crippling slice crit will be used on our volatile substance every single time. Your goal is to go that volatile substance ability crippling slice pretty much every single time to make sure that you get that big fat crit on your volatile substance. It's just a lot of damage. So. That is the fundamentals of how you want to be using your crippling slice. It's also going to be helping to make sure that you're using your crippling slice rather effectively, and it's going to help you manage your energy. So volatile substance, any ability, crippling slice, big crit on our volatile substance. There are other ways we can be generating a tactical advantage though. The first is going to be obviously with our stim boost, spamming that as often as possible is going to be very, very nice. The second is with our hollow traverse. Hollow Traverse is our leap, but we can use it from any distance. You can see here, I'm gonna go up this target's butt, and if I use my Hollow Traverse, boop, it's gonna give me a tactical advantage, and then it's going to let me use that tactical advantage on the target. So it's a free way to generate one tactical advantage pretty much every single time. It's very, very nice. In terms of juggling your tactical advantages between Veiled Strike and Laceration, I basically use Veiled Strike whenever I have either one or zero tactical advantages, so that way I can get the cooldown of, of Veiled Strike going even faster to get more tactical advantages later down the line. There'll be plenty of time to spam Laceration. It's more important to be using that Veiled Strike and getting those extra, um, those extra tactical advantages as quickly as possible. So how might this look in actual practice? Well, I'm glad you asked me. So if I start from stealth here, I'm just gonna walk down this little priority system of stim boost is the most important ability pretty much all the time because it gives us tactical advantages and it gives us that extra little bit of crit chance, or I'm sorry, crit damage and gives you extra alacrity, then backstab, volatile substance, and then juggling these two abilities over and over and over again to make sure that we have them. And then we're gonna be using our volatile substance ability, crippling slice, to make sure that we have those big crits. So. Let's do a little demonstration behind this dummy here of stim boost into backstab, volatile substance, laceration, crippling slice. And now we're just going to juggle between crippling or uh, veiled strikes and lacerations pretty much over and over and over again. We wanna make sure that every time we have the ability to use a veiled strike and we are at either one or zero uh, tactical advantages that we are using our veiled strike to make sure that we are, you know, generating as many of those tactical advantages as possible. Now you're gonna see here that uh, Stim Boost came back pretty quickly, right? For an ability that supposedly has a minute 30 second cooldown, uh, that came back very, very quickly because we are spamming our Lacerate pretty much as often as possible and making sure that we are getting those back very, 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 very quickly. So you can see the cooldown comes back very over and over and over and over and over and over and over, and over again. Now, there are going to be portions of the game where you do not have tactical advantage, all of your primary abilities are on cooldown, and you cannot be spamming Lacerate. This is the most dangerous part of the game, all right? Because you're gonna be tempted. You're gonna be tempted to be greedy, right? To be greedy, greedy. Give me the damage. There are some abilities that you can be greedy with. The first we already discussed, Corrosive Grenade. Corrosive Grenade does like 23,000 damage to the target. It's pretty nice. It's a fair chunk of damage, especially when there's nothing else to use. Corrosive Dart is the ability that will destroy your energy because it consumes 15 energy instantly, which is hard to make up very quickly. If, if, if you run into a situation where backstab and volatile, or volatile substance and veiled strike are all on cooldown and you do not have any lacerates to use and you do not have any ways to generate more 
tactical advantages. And, and you are over 90% energy. Then I give you my permission to use a corrosive dart. On one further condition though, you must have your adrenaline probe ready. Until you learn this spec and are very, very comfortable with it, and you know what you're really doing, you must only use your corrosive dart anytime you have your adrenaline probe available. Because what happens a lot of the time is people get greedy and then they destroy their energy and they have to use their adrenaline probe. There's nothing more sad than watching a concealment operative on 20% energy with no adrenaline probe because there is no good way to build it back. All right? Corrosive dart is your primary option as a filler when there's no other abilities available and you are energy secure. If you are not energy secure, if you're floating at like 70% energy or even 80% energy, frankly, I just fill with rifle shot. I know it sounds like heresy. However, rifle shot does not consume any energy. It does 6K damage. It's not that great. However, it's not terrible and it beats destroying your energy. It's essentially making a long-term investment in your energy future because you're not consuming your energy. So if you run into that situation where all of your primary abilities are on cooldown, frankly, default for rifle shot until you feel more comfortable. Then you can start getting a little bit greedier and then seeing what you can do from there. So one last time for the road. Stib boost on cooldown every single time, then follow this little party system and juggle your primary damaging abilities over and over and over again. Uh, it's pretty, it's pretty, pretty straightforward here. It's only like four buttons. Like this shouldn't be that hard. So stim boost, backstab, volatile substance. I lacerate to make sure I have my acid blade on the target. And now we just juggle. Now we just juggle. We float. We vibe. We use our hollow traverse to make more tactical advantages. And the really nice part about this spec is that it's just a priority system. If you mess it up, uh, it's not the end of the world. What's the other thing that's going to happen? Oh, I, sh I should have used my lacerate when I used my availed strike. Oh, 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 a horror. I just, I generated an extra tactical advantage by using my availed strike when I had two already. Oh, oh, the horror. Like, okay. That's fine. The only thing that's going to go wrong is that you're going to mess up your energy, which is like, you know, no, not that great. But the core fundamentals of following a party system like this mean that just do better next time. And sooner or later, you'll see yourself climbing with the leaderboards here. It's a pretty straightforward spec, as you can see here. You don't have to really think about a lot. Just be spamming your backstab as often as possible. When you get down to like 50% energy, you should be using your adrenaline probe. You want to kind of pop it prematurely to make sure that you're not like getting into too much trouble here. You can see here, even just being a little bit greedy, I have botched my energy. So I use my energy probe and then we get that energy back up to the top. It's pretty darn easy. However, you can tell the spec wants to consume your energy. So just, you know, be careful, be careful. That's all I can say to you. And then just practice, 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 and you should be ready to rock and roll. Let's talk quickly about our defensives because frankly, we don't have many. The first is our shield probe. Shield probe absorbs a little bit of damage, does like shields like 30K damage. Not great, not terrible, but you know, 30K damage in the long haul, not that great. Finally, evasion is going to give us a defensive chance of 200% for three seconds. It's very darn nice. It also gives a little bit of reflector force tech damage. You know, pretty good, pretty good. Hard to complain about that because poke in the eye. However, our primary defensive ability is actually our exfiltrate. Exfiltrate will roll us forward 12 meters and give us about three sec or a, a second and a half or two seconds, I'm sorry, of dodge chance, which is uh, pretty nice, pretty nice. It's going to increase your chance to dodge melee and range attacks by 30%. So not great, not terrible, but it's a little extra dodge chance to help you avoid some incoming attacks. So it's, it's uh, good luck. Just time your dodges in theory. And that's literally all defenses that we have. You can tell this spec is kind of a glass cannon. However, we do have one little extra ability here called Culto Probe. Culto Probe will heal you for 18,000 damage over the next 18 seconds, which is pretty darn nice. It stacks twice. So what you can do is you have two Culto Probes on yourself, and then every once in a while, it's gonna heal you for either 6K or like 10K, depending if you crit or not. So keeping Culto Probes on yourself, pretty darn nice. Pretty darn nice for making sure that we are not taking as much damage and we are healing a little bit of the damage that we take. All our other healing abilities are trash. I would talk about AoE in this spec. Frankly, there's not a whole lot of it. It's really not worth mentioning, but I'll mention it anyways. We have our frag grenade, which does like 10K damage. It consumes 20 energy, which is just madness. 
We have our Toxic Haze, which uh, does a whole bunch of AoE damage. Does like 15k. Pretty darn nice. But it consumes a tactical advantage, so have fun with that. And then finally, we have our Noxious Knives, which is the most pitiful, terrible, awful AoE building in the game. It does like 6k. As I mentioned, pretty pitiful. We're all about the single target damage in the spec. That's really all there is to it. I don't have anything else. If I miss anything, let me know in the comments down below. I hope this was helpful to you. But uh, yeah, that's all I have. Hope you guys have a fantastic day. Duke, is there anything else you have to say? You done barking? All right, he's done barking. You guys have a good day. Take care. I'll see you next time. Oh, and like and comment and subscribe if you want to. There we go. I, I did the plug.